if your Mazda 3 sounds like this, you probably need to replace your stretch belt and your serpentine belt. Look at you. I found the culprit. I'm working on a Mazda 2010 3, a Mazda 3. I'm going to show you how to do the serpentine belt and the stretch belt on this car. So the serpentine belt is just like a normal serpentine belt. What do we got here? Continental stretch belt. And a Duralast serpentine belt. And some zip dies for the installation. If you look right here, there's the tensioner pulley that you can pull back using a 14 millimeter. And then the stretch belt is underneath the car. So you have to raise the car up and I wanted to do a video on this because the other videos that I've seen on this are not adequate. So people say use zip ties and stuff to get the stretch belt on and that was not working for me. Those two belts that I just bought and those zip ties, yeah, I broke them on my first try. I'll show you how not to do this. It was extremely difficult and the zip ties just broke. First step is just to take that serpentine belt and get it around the crank pulley. Do not install the serpentine belt just yet. I repeat, do not install it. Just get it around the pulley. This is a view from the bottom side just showing the belt wrapped around the pulley. You want to hit the face of this pulley with some lubricant, some kind of grease, because there's going to be a belt sliding over the surface. You'll see what I mean here in a second. Here's the stretch belt. It's called a stretch belt because it does not have a tensioner. Put it around that bottom pulley, get it in the right grooves, and then start to feed it onto that top crank pulley. You'll see that I have a seven inch hose clamp right there, an adjustable hose clamp that I fed through the pulley. I didn't want to take it off because I kind of had to tweak the end of it to get it to fit in there. Installing the hose clamp is a five minute job. I'm tightening it now and you don't have to tighten it very much. First I'm starting with a screwdriver and then I switch to a ratcheting eight millimeter wrench. I put a 21 millimeter ratchet on here and start aligning the belt into the grooves. Keep in mind, when you're spinning this, you're actually turning over your whole motor. You wanna make sure that the serpentine belt is not getting pinched or twisted in a bad way and that the stretch belt is actually going into its proper grooves and nothing is bound up anywhere. The first time I did this, there was flying shrapnel. Now I'm wearing eye protection because I like my eyes and I'm using a jack handle extension to help me tighten this. Just keep turning slowly. Hold the shaft of the ratchet when you turn the ratchet and hopefully get it to stay so, you, so the ratchet resets. You'll see what I mean in a second here. Ratchet. I'm gonna tighten it and then hold the extension that I'm using and try to create friction so it stays. There it goes. And then it just slides right on. I started trying to remove the hose clamp right here with a screwdriver, but I realized that there is more clearance on the back side of the pulley at the eight o'clock position of the crank pulley. I realized I had to rotate the crank pulley back to where it was originally to get access to this. So that's what I'm doing right now. I'm cutting the hose clamp. Now I'm wiggling out the hose clamp with a pliers and I'm glad I didn't take it out for demonstration purposes because it was kind of challenging getting this out. Another five minute job though. 
Here's how it looks with the stretch belt installed, but we still have to do the serpentine belt. Here is a diagram of the serpentine belt and the stretch belt on Mazda 3 Club. I'll zoom in on it. The red belt is the serpentine belt, and the blue belt is the stretch belt, obviously. This is accurate for a 2010 Mazda 3 as well. Feed the belt around all of the pulleys. The tensioner pulley should be the last pulley that you feed the belt around, and it obviously won't just slip over it. You have to move the tensioner pulley using the 14 millimeter bolt on it. Right here is where I move the tensioner pulley and slide the belt over the pulley. And that should be it for all the belt work. Now it's time to rock. Yeah! All right, uh, put a ratchet on here, 21 millimeter. Turn the pulley and make sure that all the belts are lining up with their proper grooves. You don't want anything out of place here because when you start the motor, these belts would get destroyed if they weren't in their proper grooves. Not like I have ever done such a thing. Put the wheel back on. These are 19 millimeter lug nuts and the torque spec is between 80 and 90 foot pounds. Put the plastic rain guard back on. These bolts were really rusty on the Mazda I was working on. The bolts were so rusty that this bolt took a piece of the rain guard off with it. I will not be reusing this one. This job is a knuckle buster. No joke. Carefully inspect all the belts before starting the engine. This sounds so much better, it's so much quieter. Everything looks the way it should. Looking good. Now take the car for a test drive. Make sure you retorque your lug nuts after a couple drives. And you're good to go.